Hi there guys, got a video here today on the Leshy 2 and what we're going to be doing is putting it all back together. It's been apart for a little while now since we've made the removable bottle valve but it's time to put it back together. We're starting with the valve and I've laid all the parts out in their rough orientation on the block. Right then, let's start. So first off we're going to be tackling this piece here and we're just going to take the power jets and insert the springs into them like so. For those wondering, I'll run two 1.4mm power jets on my rifle. I did make them myself, I think Edgar I know makes up to 1.3, but I decided quite early on in the tuning of the Leshy 2, but I wanted the valve to be shutting as fast as possible. And there they are, in the back there, just make sure they're poking through the little valve there, which they are. While we're here, I'm going to also put my little plug in. Yours might not have that, that's a, one of my components. Next we'll start changing some O-rings. First one I'm going to change is this one. And then this one is a 25 by 3 We're going to put that over the back there. And we'll also take out the one around the brass shell. And the one from the valve. The one around the valve is a 10 by one5 so we'll just hook that over there. And then the one around the brass shell is a 16 by 2 Once they're on there, I'm just going to add some silicone grease from my lube kit. We just want to dab. Wiping off the excess. Next, we'll install the little brass shell into the valve housing here. Now this can be quite tight, so what I like to do is drop it in. Then I've got a little piece of peak, although you could use a pen or a piece of Delrin, and just push it in there, seating it against the end. It should go up against a nice stop. Once that's in, we can put the small spring in the back here. It is quite stiff normally. And then we'll put the little brass seat on top of that, making sure it's still got the little PTFE washer on it. That one there. Just make sure that's seated correctly. And then what I found easiest to do is just put a very, very small dab of silicone grease on the top of that seat. And what that will do is just stop the ball bearing rolling off as you put it on. So there it is there. A little ceramic ball bearing that goes on top and then we can take the valve and stick it on the top. And then with that all together, we'll just leave it to one side for a second. We'll be putting it in shortly. Next, we'll put the end stop for the push pin in. So first, we'll just hook this little O-ring off at the end here. That's with a small, sharp, pointy thing. And then we're just gonna replace that with a four by one O-ring. There is there. Then just add a small hint of silicone grease to it. And then what we can do is assemble the end stop for the push pin. So these four components here, small spring, end stop and carrier, and also this little cap for the spring. So the end stop goes in the end there, followed by the spring, and then the end stop will go on in a minute. I have to do just line the hole up at the end there it's the same both sides so it hasn't got a way round then we can just put that in the valve housing in this hole here it's quite stiff so just give it a push and then the half moon shape lines up with the bottom and then we can just put the cap on like so once the little cap's in, what we're going to do is just add a small amount of molly grease to the track in here. So, just using our sharp pointy thing, just a small smear of molly grease, and then we'll also put a small amount on this piece here. This is just the lock, so that the, so that the rear of the action can't jump out of the locking pins. So it's mainly on this back face here, and along, along the spring. You only want a very, very small smear. 
and then we'll put that in. So flat face down, and then with our sharp pointy thing we'll just put the spring carrier down and push the pin in like that. If your one's tight just make sure this half moon shape here is fully in line. If this is too far rotated around what will happen is this will bind up. So our one's nice and free. So we'll just put the cap back on. And this is the little black button and we're going to do the screw up with a two and a half mil allen key. So that works nicely. And then from the front side here just look in the end and make sure that everything's lined up in here. You should see the small hole in there, should be able to see through there. And then from this side we'll push the push pin in. My one might look a little different from yours. I've made myself a new ball. The old one was plastic and it had split, so I made a new one out of steel. So I don't know if that's going to make it better or it might not work at all, you never know. But we're going to try it. So we're going to put a shred in from this side. It's a little difficult to show for the camera. And then just make sure from this side that the pin's all the way out the end. And it can move back and forward nice and freely, which it can. So then we'll bring back the back of the valve and the little push pin. This is the second push pin and this one goes in shallow side down so the turn down section goes down like that and we'll just push the two pieces together now we have it there's the back of the valve assembled from here we can just push the transfer port in i'm using a ptfe one and for anyone wondering i'm running a 3.6 mil hole in the transfer port there lastly we'll put the indexing system back so first thing we'll do is drop this little conical piece in the bottom here. And then with our sharp pointy thing, just poke it in there. Make sure it's sitting nice and flat. So you should be able to see the top of it. If it's pointing up the wrong way, it won't work properly. Next, we'll turn our attention to this piece here. And we'll remove the O-ring. And then we'll replace that with a 7x1 o-ring. And just add a small amount of silicon grease to it. And then it goes this way round in the rifle. So cut out to this side here. Like that. Next we'll drop in the little cut out piece and it's short side down. So there's two ends. One end is longer than the other and the long end goes upwards. like that. Spring goes on the top. Once the spring's on the top there we can add this little top part. And that's just a cover for the spring. And that goes in. There's cut out on one side and that cut out aligns to the steel part that we put in just a second ago. And we can push the two pins through. Those pins there don't go all the way through, they stop about there. They're a little back from this face here, but are covered by a plate that goes over the top. So next we'll stick the indexer in, and that goes in this way. And then we'll put the back cover piece on. This shaft here goes through that hole there, like so. And then we'll cap that off with a little screw. And that's done up with a 3mm allen key. Right then, so that's the bulk of the work done. The valve's probably the most complicated part. So we got that out of the way nice and early. Next we'll start working on the air tanks. And the first thing we'll do is we'll bring back the regulated section. I didn't take the regular later apart in this series. I've already done a strip and rebuild of the regulator. And my one's working quite nicely. For anyone wondering, my regulator's at the moment set to 80 bar. A little bit of silicon grease around these o-rings here. I've already replaced them but if you did want to replace these ones here that is a 16x2 and I do go over all the internal o-ring sizes in the regulator rebuild video so I won't cover that again here. 
push the regulator in nice and firmly and then we can get the snap ring installed. So we'll do that with some snap ring pliers. And there it is. Regulator is nice and captive. Next I'm just going to drop in my plenum plug. This is one of the sort of Russian nesting doll ones that I made. I said before in a previous video I didn't really like this solution and I am working on a better alternative but I'm going to put my plenum plug in and then before this section goes on we'll just add a small amount of silicon grease to this o-ring here. So this doesn't need to be done up really really tight, it doesn't need to be touching, the o-ring does seal in here before it bottoms out. So if you got one of the newer Leshy 2's with the adjustable regulator on the outside, if it's quarter of a turn out you can just align it. But this is one of the ones I made very early on. So my one's just got a regulator gauge on the side. And I'll install that. Like so. This is one of those Chinese digital gauges and they still seem to be working quite well. So obviously no pressure in there at the moment but I am running my regulator at about 80 bar. So next we'll install this rear air cylinder and before that we'll just change the o-rings. So this one on the front here that's 25 by 3 like the valve and these two here are 18 by 2s. Small amount of circum grease around these. And then we'll screw it together. Now that this section is complete, I'll stick that to one side and I'll bring back the butt section. Right, so these are all the parts we're going to put into the butt section. So first off we'll start with the gauge. This is the gauge housing here. We'll just remove all three O-rings from it. So the two O-rings around the body are the 12 by 1.5s. So we'll stick them on. And then, as always, small amount of silicon grease. And then the one in the end there is a 3 by 2 So we'll put a small amount of silicon grease on it before it goes in the hole. and then we'll do our gauge up. And then we're going to take two adjustable spanners and nip the gauge up. I've explained before that I like to use adjustable spanners on the gauges as I've found they're not really a spanner size. So there it is, nice and nipped up. And then we can install it in the top hole here. So making sure our gauge is nice and aligned, just push it in and then install the snap ring on the back. There we have it. Next we're going to put the bottle thread on. Now this is the standard one from Edgun and there's only really two service parts on it. This o-ring here, so the one-way valve that stops air leaking back through the fill port, that's got an o-ring on it and that's a 4x2. So when you do this back up, using a 2.5mm Allen key, you just need to get the top of the head touching the o-ring. So you don't want to do it in really tight, as when you go to fill the gun up, the o-ring is going to pop off. You also don't want to have it too loose, otherwise the air is just going to escape around the back of the o-ring. So just get the head of the screw to touch the o-ring, which is a 4x2, and that's good enough. But I'm not going to be using this one. I've made myself a new one, so we're going to be using this one. I've already changed that O-ring, but we'll change this one. And then this one is a 14 by 2 It's the same on the Edgun one. I just made this one the same as the Edgun one. So 14 by 2 goes on the back there. Silicon grease as normal. Right then, next we're going to install the back cap. I've painted mine black. I did that quite a while ago now. 
they are black plastic but with just a red band painted around them so I didn't like that much so I just painted it black. So we'll stick the small spring and the little ball bearing on this hole here. And there's the spring in, and there's the ball bearing and then very carefully we're just going to depress the ball into the hole and slide the cap over the top. Lines up nicely. Now we just got to install the C clip. That's this one here. So what I've got is my little peak punch again. It's quite handy for the head gun. And then push it on there. Works nicely, nice and captive. You don't have to use a piece of peak, you can use anything really. That's just what I had laying around. But once it's in, we'll put it in the back of the rifle. Like so. And then we'll take our fill pull or our fill probe and push it in the end there. Next we'll take an 18x2 o-ring and we'll just push it over the end there. As always, silicon grease it. And then I'm going to install my bottle adapter. Doing it up nice and tight with an adjustable spanner. And then when it's done up, just make sure you can remove the probe. Your one, you're probably going to be either installing a bottle or the standard head gun cylinder. And the procedure is exactly the same. You would just do this up with the 18x2 o-ring in the end there. There are flaps on here if you want to get it nice and tight. Is an o-ring in here. This one is the same as the cylinder ones. It's a 25x3. And then once that's on, you just screw your cylinder on or the bottle just goes directly onto the M18 threads. So now we can bring back the cylinder section and we're going to install it in the top there. What I've found easiest to do is get the screw lined up so it's dropped in the hole. Find it with the Allen key. It's a 4mm Allen key this one. And then push the two pieces together. And then do the screw up. Now obviously we need to align it, so the butt piece needs to be aligned with the front section. So just get it nice and aligned by eye. I'm happy there. And do that up nice and tight. So this section is ready to pressure test now. So what I'm going to do is bring back the bottle. This bottle's empty. I emptied it before we started recording and it's ready to fill up and we can make sure it doesn't leak. Right then guys, now that the back of the rifle is done we can move on to the front. So I've just laid out all the parts we're going to be putting onto the block at the moment and we're going to just reassemble it in the same order we disassembled it. So we'll start with a locking mechanism. Now there's two Delrin washers. On my rifle both washers were the same thickness. However on some rifles they can be different. So just put them back in the order that you took them off in. I'm just going to put one washer in one side on this little row locating tab and then I'm just going to put one of these screws in the back here. And all this will do is stop the pin from falling out when we go to put the spring on. And then I'll just add a small amount of molly grease to the locking pin. Just so as it rotates it's got a little bit of lubrication and then we'll push that through the hole. Like so. Then flip it over on this side. And we're just going to... And there we have it. It's in there. We need to keep a good firm grip on this. If you let this go, it's going to go ping. And you'll never be able to find it. So, then we'll hook the back of the spring onto that little pin there. And then pushing the lever up nice and firmly. Get it up and seated. And then we can just wiggle the lock into place. Like so. It's really quite tricky, especially doing it for the camera. 
can do this screw up with a two and a half mil Allen key. Now we don't need to do this screw up tight as if we do it up too tight the arm doesn't fully release properly so just loosen it off a touch and then the arm should rotate nice and smoothly like so. If this was coming loose on you you could put a little bit of Loctite on there but I've never had it come loose when operating my rifle so I'm just going to leave it without. And then we can take this little screw out and set it down on the table. Next what we'll do is we'll take our back piece here and our little locking pin and we'll just put a little bit of molly grease around this. And then we'll drop it into the hole. Get the cut out from the pin lined up on the bottom there and then hook it into the locking lever. This does have a couple of locating pins so it can be a little tight. But there we go, there it is like that. And the locking lever is nice and free, there's no friction to that. So we can just go ahead and put our three screws in and do them up with a 3mm Allen key. Do them up nice and tight. That's the locking system installed. What we'll do next is add the magazine tensioner on. So that's in this hole and this hole here. So first we'll drop the little ball into the hole followed by the small spring. Making sure that the spring goes down the hole and doesn't catch in this hole here. And we'll do up the little grub screw. And that'll be with a 2mm Allen key. And then with our magazine, just put it in and out of the hole until we get the desired tension. That feels pretty good. And then we'll add the locking screw. And that's just in this side here. So the magazine wants to be nice and free to turn, you don't want any friction on it. That little bearing there is just to add a little piece of tension so it's not floppy in the hole. Next we'll just add the magazine indexer. And the first thing we need to do is just put the Delrin wheel back on it. That's pretty simple. Put the pin in like so. And then I'm just going to punch this in with a little hammer. And there it is. The little Del Rim wheels back on there. It has got a chamfer on one side, so the chamfer corresponds to the chamfer on the indexing arm. So like that. And the pin goes in from this way. But then next we'll add the indexing arm and this little piece here to the back of the rifle. So this is a bit tricky. It's a bit fiddly, but... This piece goes up this way, so with the counter bore up, and the spring just is captive in that. We hook the arm over that pin there, and then simultaneously get this piece into this hole here. Pull the arm down and hook this pin into that hole. So the arm's now captive, and we can just put the two C-clips on. C-clips of these little tiny ones here. And again I'm just going to be using my peak punch. Like that. Just a note on this little arm here. Mine is slightly bent. I don't know if that's intentional or not. But mine is slightly bent. And it doesn't really seem to affect the indexing of the magazine at all. Um, so I'm not sure if that's supposed to be like that or my one was just bent or I might have bent it. But it works fine. The magazine lines up nicely and there doesn't seem to be any issue. So I didn't bend it back just in case it was supposed to be like that. But there we go. Next I'll just add the little Valkyrie kit accessory on the front there. And the Valkyrie kit accessory does have a way up. There's a larger hole at the top and a smaller hole at the bottom to correspond with these two pins here. We'll just put that on. 
and then do the two screws up with a 4mm allen key. So there it is, our lock arm works nicely, the magazine indexing system works nicely and it's all back together. Right then, so now it's the trigger unit. The trigger unit on this rifle is very very simple. So first we're just going to disassemble the safety pin, like so. And on this side we're going to add the spring and the ball bearing to this hole here. And then we're just going to put push the pin through the top hole. Now this can only go in one way in the rifle and that's springing the bolt at the top there. And we're going to install this in this section here. Like I said at the time, there's no real reason why you would ever take this out. But we did it for the disassembly video. So we're just going to push the ball in. Like that. Just get it started. Then we're going to slide the pin in the middle. And then again using our little peak punch we're just going to press down nice and firmly. And there it is. I don't know if you'd been able to see that. I had to press that quite hard so I had to get it out of camera shot. But there it is. And then we'll just put the safety bar back in. So from either side. And then we'll do that up with 3mm allen key. So safety works. And then the trigger hooks in this hole here. So again, nice firm push. And then the final thing we've got is the last pin here. Now we've got to hook the spring over that and then this pin goes in this section here. We obviously have to hook the trigger spring over that. Push that down nice and firmly. And that's the trigger back where it needs to be. My one was hooked on this side, so that's the side I put it back on. Next we're going to bring back the block and we're just going to make the two sections together. Like so. And then we're just going to screw it in. There's two screws, the longer one of the two goes at the back. And that's done up with a 3mm allen key. And then the front one is the shorter of the two. And again, that's just done up with a 3mm allen key. Next we'll put the handle on. So we'll put the steel piece in first. And the grip over the top. And then the screw in the bottom. So next we'll put in the barrel. And we'll just undo these screws here. And then we'll slide the barrel in from this side. Lining the cutout in that little C ring there with the indexing arm. Pulling it in. Giving the barrel a nice tug. And then do these screws up. This is a 3mm allen key. They need to be tight but they don't need to be done up really really tight they just need to be nipped. This block is split and it is aluminium so just a little bit of pressure on there and that will clamp the barrel nicely. So next we'll put back the shroud and the Valkyrie kit on. So there's the Valkyrie kit. Then just do that up with a 3mm allen key. There that is. Next we'll put the shroud back on, so this is my just custom one, and that just screws on the front there. Right there guys, that's it, all back together. I need to make myself a new wrap for the cylinder. My other one got a bit tangled up so I'll have to redo that, but I won't bother boring you with that. So there it is, it's full up with air, or as much as my bottle's got in it at the moment, it's a bit low. So we're at about 170 there at the moment. But it does shoot and fire as it should. So there we go. The other thing I said we'd talk a little bit about is the setting of this pin here. Now all I can really say about this is you're going to need to have a little experiment. 
I found there's sort of a sweet spot with it. I've got mine in there at the moment. Edgun does have a animation where he shows you that this pin here can't be a certain amount higher or lower than this pin here. But I fine tuned my one as every now and again when you're shooting the rifle you're sort of getting a, a really loud shot. It was pulling out a lot of air from the cylinder. And I found by tweaking this little screw here I've managed to eliminate that. So if you want to change it you undo this lock at the bottom. That's with a 2mm Allen key. Then you fine adjust it. It is a very, very small amount at the time. Going too far in with it re results in them loud shots where you dump a lot of air out. But as you can see from the wear, my one is about flush with the body of the rifle. So that's where I've left my one. Right then, so that was the rebuild and I've given it a good test over the weekend at Pete's Air Gun Farm. Results have been really good. I'm quite happy with the accuracy now. It's performing really, really well over the chronograph. And overall, I'm really quite pleased with how the rifle's turning out. So here are our groups, all of these were done at 50 yards, most of them are 8 shot groups. The ones at the top, these four here, are the ones I really tried with the rifle and sort of sat down and shot it properly. The others are sort of pellet testing and just checking zeros as we're changing things. But 8 shots, 50 yards, you can't really argue with them results. If I'm honest, I don't really shoot the leshy like I do my other rifles. It's more fun to shoot it at spinners and sort of knock down targets and that sort of thing. Rattling off a few shots is more interesting to me than just sort of shooting it like a normal rifle. And then we have the chrono results here. So we did 40 shots, all of them there. Five seconds in between each shot just to give the regulator a chance to reset. And then the spreads at the bottom there. Spread of seven over 40 shots, straight out of the tin, straight in the magazine with none taken out. So the regulator and the valve are really working well now. It was doing similar results before, but I just thought I'd show you. But there you go. So straight out of the tin. No weighing, no salting. Really quite happy with that. The only thing I did notice with this is the power's a little low at the moment. So what I'll probably do is just change the transfer port puck for a slightly bigger one. Right then guys, so let's go about do it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.